Welcome Exiles. Today I want to teach you how to create plus five chess pieces. The reason for doing this is because with gem levels, a lot of skills get a lot of scaling. For example, looking at a skill like Righteous Fire, and this goes the same thing for pretty much all spell skills, they get about 10% damage per level. So going from level 20 to 21, they get about 10% more damage. And this holds true to about level 30. So between level 30 and level 20, you see we go from 1500 all the way up to about 5000. So that's over three times the damage we get from going 10 levels higher. And this is the same thing with all spells. And generally when you go from 30 to then 31, 32, 30 and below, you start getting only 5% more damage based on the previous level per level. So from going to 30 to 40, we only get about 80% more damage versus the three times the damage going from 20 to 30. Uh, so the scaling starts to slow down once you get to the higher levels, but is there still a lot of scaling there? So when you can take a spell to a very high level, it gives you a lot of damage. So that's the reason for going for a bunch of levels. Generally, one of the best ways to do this, and it, it still is pretty respectable and ends up car costing a lot of money, is getting a skin of the loyal with a GG double corruption. So this uh, sort of skin of the loyal is Typically, it'll get you plus six levels. So if you have a plus two, plus two, and then you have plus one socketed, plus one socketed levels up in power, which gives your main skill another level. So effectively, these sorts of things are going to be plus six to your main skill if you can get a double corrupted skin of loyal. The downside of skin of loyal is you can never change the socket colors. So you might find the GG double corruption for your build, and then the socket colors are three green, two red, one blue, and all of a sudden your skill, your main skill you're using, it cannot use these colors effectively at all. So that's a really big downside to skin of loyal. You could get a double corruption that's really good, but then the skin, the, the colors, they just suck. So generally, if you if you start looking at uh, skin of loyals with actually like decent colors, like a high amount of blues which is what you want for a spell skill, you start looking at 70x plus, these start to get very expensive. So what I'm gonna show you is a way to create a plus five, which is still a pretty expensive craft, but on top of that, you can take it past the value of a skin of the loyal all the way to the dream chest, a plus nine with a double corruption, which is three levels higher than skin of the loyal, as well as having six white sockets, so you can use any skill you want with it, pretty much just swapping in and out, as long as it has the same gem level scaling as the chess piece you're doing. And this was my project over the weekend. I ended up crafting eight of these chess pieces and double corrupting eight of these chess pieces. I had three bricks. So this is one of the bricks. The other two bricks are in my stash. I got four that hit no change. They hit white sockets, which is basically no upgrade for us. Nothing happens. And I had one double corruption. So right here, this chess piece itself is roughly a plus six for any projectile skill or in rare cases like a Holy Flame totem, totem or a Molten Strike, this ends up being a plus eight chess piece. Or War Cry Gems, the, it's a plus eight for those as well. The reality here is that at the tippy top of scaling, you could get plus two strength, plus one int, or plus two int, plus one strength, or plus two dex, plus one int, and then plus one active, plus one support, and then a plus four corruption. So that's a plus nine chess piece. That is the potential of what you could get. And with plus nine armor, you can take pretty much any spell kill, yeah take any spell skill all the way to level four. You have plus nine that takes you from 21 to 30. You have plus five from a staff that takes you to 35. You have plus three from empower that takes you all the way to 38. And then you have plus two from your amulet and all of a sudden pretty much any spell, if you have the correct, you know, say it's an AOE skill and you have AOE socketed gems, any AOE socketed gem skill, you can take all the way to level 40. And there are some use cases where you can take things beyond level 40. Say I have a fire skill like Purifying Flame, and I get the corruption of plus one socketed, that will allow me to take a support gem, like Awakened Added Fire, which gives you a level at level five, all the way to level 10. If I have a level six Awakened Added Fire, and I added plus two strength, plus one support, and plus one socketed, that takes it to level 10, and all of a sudden I get another two levels from Awakened Added Fire. There's some cool things you can do like that, depending on which corruptions you get, and I think this is just a cool min-maxing portion of PoE. It's it's a very expensive thing to do. It's a costly adventure. Myself, in crafting all eight of these chess pieces, I think I spent somewhere in the range of 250 to 300x. Now, granted, initially, as I was doing this, I was in a learning process. I wasted a lot more money on the first few chess pieces as I refined this process and learned how to do it better. So let's get into the process. What is the process of crafting this chess piece? Well, it simply is doing something like this, grabbing a resonator, and crafting with faceted fossils, generally with dense, pristine, and corroded as the best 
out, uh, or best, most cost efficient way to do it. And then the next up would be uh, dense, pristine, plus faceted. And this will vary depending on how expensive the prime resonators are. If prime resonators get way up in prices, then if um, they're too expensive, then the triple socket, dense, pristine, faceted may be the best play. So let's look at crafting process of how you create one of these. I, I open this up in to Craft of Exile. To start off with, really what we care about is the suffixes. I will go into detail why we can force the active gems and support gems later on, but first I'm gonna start off with how do we force on good suffixes that can get us to the plus five chess piece scenario. So what I have here set up is I have, we wanna get strength gems here, then I have dex int or dex strength strength as any one of these will do, and then I just want one dex or one int as the other gem here. The idea being, well, I actually probably should take int out of there. Well, int could stay in there technically because, I mean, if we get int, we will be happy in the case where we have strength, int, and percent strength because we can get plus two strength. Now, the reason for this is when you elevate percent strength, percent dex, or percent intelligence, the elevated mod gives you another additional level. So the idea being here is you want to get the plus two to whatever thing you're going for, and then you want to get percent strength as well. Technically, if you hit the T2% strength or T2% dex, you can try to ride the gauntlet and try to Maven Orb to T1 and then Maven Orb to T0. Um, it's a risky thing to do, but you can definitely do that. I'll put in, in gems back in here. But the idea here is this, this socket resonator combination is about 40 tries on average for... Um, from sp actually spending time crafting these chess pieces myself in the process of going for something like this you'll hit chess pieces like plus one in deck strength active or plus one in deck strength support and chess pieces like those you can end up finishing up relatively cost efficiently and throwing at the double corruption chamber to see if you hit a gg double corrupt on like a plus eight or a pseudo plus nine for certain skills depending on what you're using um, so not all the time you're going to be spending 40 fossils before you'll get to the point where you get something good enough where you can take it to the double corruption chamber because a lot of times you, you'll end up hitting a plus four that's really good for say if I wanted to double corrupt this I could still get a plus eight chest out of it type of deal or a plus five that is pretty freaking good for it's not well it's a plus four for pretty much any skill is what it ends up being because dex strength int only ends up being a plus two for any respective skill gem um, so the reality is you'll hit usable chess piece before you get to this 40 mark generally speaking and a lot of times you'll hit the scenario where you get strength percent strength and you'll just want to be like oh i just want a cool uh plus two strength chess piece which ends up being a plus six for any strength gem like flame golem like stone golem which is what i might end up using this chess piece for for example now after you hit a good suffix combination say that's say if you want to go for a chess piece like this where it has the plus three and then support and active and you want to double corrupt that you're going to end up doing this crafting process for um fading she now getting the plus one support and plus one active now how do we do this how do we guarantee this the reason we chose elder and the reason we chose warlord is there is a small amount of influence prefixes when we look at the pool elder all it has is plus one support as fizz taking his fire reflect life and then when you look at the warlord pool it's just fizz taking his fire active and fizz reflect now what we do here is we augment on fire this will block the uh, heaviest mod pool which is the thousand waiting here and another thousand oh it's only 800 waiting for elder so it'll block 1800 waiting if we augment on that fire mod and then we do augment influence if we're doing augment influence the only mods it can hit are support gems fizz reflect life fizz reflect and active gems and in between that waiting it's about 650 it hits a plus gem modifier and about 1200 waiting it hits the life or the fizz is it 1200 it might be closer to 1500 actually i think it is closer to 1500 because you have 500 here you have 800 here and you have 200 here so that's it nope that's 1300 no no that's 1500 math is hard sometimes but 700 plus 800 is 1500 so you have 650 versus 1500 so roughly in the range of a little bit better than a one in four yeah a little bit better than a one in four is what you're looking at here so you'll you have a good chance once you augment on an influence you one in four chance you hit the influence mod you want if you don't hit the influence mod you want it's okay because the next augment influence is going to have even better waiting it's going to be like a one in two chance if you hit if you hit fizz reflect you have 700 waiting that's taken out of the pool and now it's between an 800 and a 650 waiting you have really good odds you're going to hit a plus support gem so the second augment influence has really good odds the scenario is 
if you augment on an influence you get support gems what you can always do is you can always take off reflect fizz you can always take off the um percent life these things you can do remove fizz remove life if you remove the fizz taken as fire you just remove another fizz and you augment fire back on and then go back to augmenting influence uh, the process here basically allows you to essentially always guarantee plus one active plus one support within about I average usually doing this step in the range of 10 to 20 X in buying harvest crafts to put on plus one support and plus one active because the reality is if you have if you have a chest piece where you're trying to hit the suffixes and hit the support gem and hit the active gem the odd oh that's redeemer whoops I'm clicking on the one wrong one and the active gem oh that's not shaper yeah and the active gem the odds suddenly become i gotta put separate these they suddenly become way worse the odds of me hitting all these things together to begin with become 10 times more expensive when the reality is it's only going to add, add 10 to 20x on your initial investment there to finish it off with harvest and a lot of times you'll hit a scenario where you already have active gems and you're just putting on support gems in which case it'll be cheaper uh, it'll be less cost or less costly to you because you're only forcing on one more gem rather than two gems from the zero gems scenario on your prefix pool. So that is the crafting process to get yourself a plus five chess piece. I myself, when doing this, initially I started with int chess and int based chess pieces. These odds are roughly twice as bad as strength bases. Dex bases are in the middle. The reason being is int bases have mana which I believe kind of screws up the uh, weightings for being able to hit certain things because you have another big prefix thing that's going to be hit a lot and then that's going to make you less likely to hit a lot of suffixes type of deal. So definitely if you're doing this, I'd recommend going with an astral plate or going with some strength base that's a lower strength base if you're worried about your character not being able to have enough strength to wear an astral plate. That's what you want to look at doing because the idea is pretty simple. You want to be able to have the best odds at getting the plus gem levels so that way you can create a plus five chest piece and then maybe at some point you can take that all the way to a plus nine which I'm probably going to continue to do in future leagues this is a cool project that I like to do and spend my currency on because I think getting a plus nine chest piece being able to take any gem to level 40 or even beyond that there are select cases I could take well beyond 40 like wave of conviction there's some shenanigans you can do with awakened added lightning awakened added fire stuff like that and there's really some cool things you can do with a chess piece like this so hopefully you guys enjoy the video about how to create a plus five chess piece and maybe one of you will have the luck of double corrupting and getting a plus nine and you'll be the envy of the crowd to have the only plus nine in existence in path of exile history appreciate you guys watching the video and i hope you have an excellent day